Good day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. <coughs> We're in the little tiny town of Deepwater. I've just had a feed at their roadhouse. I call it the Brigadoon Roadhouse because it's sometimes not actually open. And we're headed for Rangers Valley. Now you're not going to believe this, but this town is actually having a scarecrow festival. Therefore, thus and because, we have scarecrows beside the road. This is assumed to be decorative and uh, they hope it's going to attract tourists. So never let it be said that Warbles on a lot does not assist the local tourist industry. Now we've got a choice, we could go up the highway or we could go the back way. And I'm driving the car, so I think we're going to go the back way. So let's go along Nant Park Road towards Rangers Valley. This won't be a particularly exciting drive for the rev heads because the front wheel drive car on dirt is towing a trailer. Here we have the deep water cemetery for the deaf, dumb and blind, the people who are just dying to get in there. some new settlers. Across the road from the existing farm. That ought to be fun. What there is is generally along the road or just beside the fence. an example of a bloke who never wanted to have to rebuild his, his gate posts. Would you look at the size of those strainer posts? Better if I look at the bloody road, eh?
fortunate little agricultural daydream. Weatherboard house with a corrugated iron roof. Some of them even have white picket fences. On between one and three thousand acres around here. absolutely cannot resist. I'm going to slow right down. Oh, look. Allison has toadstools beside the marijuana mailbox. I wonder what they grow on that farm. Just came up for a, with a name for this movie, eh? Deep Water to Rangers Valley via marijuana. I suppose I should put you out of your misery and point out that um, the people who live there claim it was the original Aboriginal name for the place and the spelling. And by the way, out there on the horizon, we're actually looking at my place. I'm up there on the tree line. There's a couple of perspectives on this road where I get to see what my place looks like from afar, or at least I can see where my neighbour's place joins my place. The bare sheep paddock up against the forest. Uh, this greenery to the left has obviously been fertilised and seeded with improved pasture. Whereas the stuff on the right is more likely to have been fertilised 40 years ago and merely grazed after having been ring barked a couple of times. Oh, sorry, snake. Yes, you got away with it. Interesting. You notice how spotting the snake caused me to slow down. When I slowed down, I was able to control a vehicle coming through a bunch of pretty savage potholes. If I'd hit the potholes at the speed I was doing before seeing the snake, I would have likely finished upside down in a gum tree. I got a really nice theory that that's the purpose of road kills. When people are driving fast enough that their own life is being put into danger, somehow the cosmic scoreboard effect organises for a wild animal to jump up in front of them and make them pay attention. The joke of it is down in the cities they haven't got enough wildlife, so they use children and geriatrics for roadkill. Here we have a serious violation of the mailbox law. <coughs> Guess what the insurance companies would say if somebody ran into that? Great big stone obstacle conducted on the side of the road. Constructed, I mean. A little bit of gravel on the road. Evidence of my shire rates going to actually maintain the infrastructure in the area that I live. Heading west. Oh, 
provided a water point for those cows. Down there you can see Rangers Valley Dam. Once upon a time that was the largest privately owned dam in the Southern Hemisphere. <coughs> owned by Rangers Valley Station, which was then progressively sold out to a Japanese investment company called Marabini Resources. It then became the largest, well, I call it a concentration camp. I call it a concentration camp for cattle. They call it a feedlot. That's where the Gleninus Aquatic Club and Sailing Club used to conduct their activities. They don't do much anymore because uh, we end up with some insurance problems. 4,500 acre feet covering 400 acres. Now, uh, out there on the horizon. Actually, where is Hogs Mountain Tower? Why can I not spot Hogs Mountain Tower? Yeah. Anyway, out over there, that's my place. That little triangular patch. Pretty sure if it's not that one, it's that one there. Fairly hard without a compass. But anyway, that's Rangers Valley Feedlot. And we have three minutes more to get the one and only vehicle crossing of the entire movie. Fairly strange that I can't actually spot the tower on Hoax Mountain. Maybe they've pulled the damn thing down for maintenance. Not only did I wave, but the driver of the other vehicle waved. That's because we are beyond the event horizon of the social black hole. <coughs> We're out in the region where time moves more slowly. Bad ideas take longer to filter in, like the feedlot over there. And good ideas take longer to die out, like the idea that you wave to everybody when you meet them on the road. I don't mind living in a social black hole. Better than being at the leading edge of the rat race as the lemmings go running over the cliff. At least that's the way I look at it. Oh, what a pity the smell of the feedlot's so bad. 25,000 cows living behind barbed wire make an awful lot of shit and we got four millimetres of rain yesterday. So it's probably half a million tons of wet cow shit over there and the wind's blowing from it to me. Very, very upsetting to breathe. I do believe we're going to get to the end of Nant Park Road and maybe we're just barely going to get onto the start of Yarraford Road which is, of course, the one that I live on. Did you notice how the ends of the road sign was shot out. So we're going on a Rangers Valley Road for a very brief period in time. We're now on a Yarraford Road. I 
would say been on Yarraford Road 15 seconds we're coming up to 15 minutes and 30 seconds Aha. Righto, that's it fellas. Ciao.